What is up guys, Alex or Obey Rads here, and today we've got how to make a montage episode 2. Uh, I haven't actually uploaded this episode for many reasons. Um, I've actually been super busy with my uh, photography course in college, and you know, because I, I missed a couple of weeks, which I'm already going to get into right now, uh, but I missed a couple of weeks to begin with, and I've had to catch up quite a lot of work, and now half term has come, so I'm obviously going to be making more videos and catching up uh, with college and whatnot. Um, so you know, that's like a, a great... Um, you know, it's lucky I've kind of got a half term right here. Um, I'm actually using my um, my iPhone mic for for recording this because, um, as I said, my Turtle Beach is broken. I'm not really sure what the quality is like. Hopefully, you know, if you're listening to this right now, um, you know, it's good enough to upload, so the quality is fine. Hopefully, um, but um, what I'm actually going to show you in this episode is um, comp you replacing the footage in Premiere Pro. Um, with an After Effects composition, and this, what this initially does is it saves rendering. It you know, it's, it saves a lot of time. Um, any adjustments you make in, in After Effects, it will make that adjustment in Premiere Pro. So, you know, uh, this clip that I've already done, like this pink bit right here, this shows that it's a composition. You know, it's a Zacharac um, linked composition 05. Um, so, I mean, this is like the composition. If I was to you know put color correction on that now. Um, it would in After Effects. It would initially update in this. So if I was to do, um, you know, if I was to go in here right now and add a really ugly color correction, um, you know, just put, quickly put like a an avatar on or whatever, you know, just stick the blue up, um, save it, and then go back into Premiere Pro. Um, it would auto it automatically update, and as you can see now, we have this horrible blue avatar <laughs> color correction. So. You know, I'm just going to quickly get rid of that for the record though, um, I think that's that, no, that, that doesn't, hmm, is that it? <laughs> Fuck, I'll do what, I'll just do command Z, there we go, so now I've obviously taken it away and now it's gone in the After Effects composition, which, you know, is great because if you want to make any adjustments, um, you can just do them without having to re-render anything and stuff like that, re-render in your footage. Um, it's just great. So what I'm actually going to do is initially show you how to do this. Now I've already done the first and second clip uh, previously when I tried doing this tutorial, but um, the tweaks done, the frame rate on these clips were a bit messed up, so I gave up on the tutorial. But you know, I, I'm just going to persevere with this series. Uh, it's got good ratings, and I'm, I'm just happy to help people. Um, so anyway, now we have this uh, clip on Skid Row, and he's just a regular. I think it's a quad feed, or it might be a five man, a rolling quad feed. Yes. And um, what we're initially now going to do is we're just going to highlight all of the footage uh, on the video one layer, and we're going to right click, not like that, <laughs> right click, replace with After Effects composition. Now immediately um, that will take you into After Effects if you've already got it open. If it, you haven't got it open, it will open it up for you. And as you can see now, we have all of these like the footage completely lined up, and the speed is completely the same as if it was in Premiere Pro. So obviously that keeps it in sync and everything like that. That's why I asked you to sync it up in the first episode. So you know now we can be at this position, and uh, oh look at that money. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. So now we're at this position, and um, you know it's, it, you don't have to. Like initially, what people do when they edit is they um, kind of you know they they edit their clip in After Effects and hope and like they, you know, might sync it up in After Effects. So that takes a lot more time and stuff like that. So I'm just going to show you what uh, I do. Usually I pre-compose the footage straight away and uh, call it, I don't know, footage one or something. And, uh, you know, that just keeps it so it's all organized. Um, sometimes I've noticed um, with some clips you might get a random black frame. Like I'm skipping through the fr frames right now. And right here I've gotten just a, a, a lost frame or something. You know, it's just nothing. So we can fix that in Premiere Pro, so if you do have that, don't worry about it. Um, easily fixable in uh, Premiere Pro once we've uh, edited the clip. So as you see, he gets the quad feed here. So I'm just going to Twixter at this moment right here. Um, his frame rate for his clips, by the way, this guy who I'm editing for, um, they're, they're like doubled. So if I were to add Twixter, it would be so like retarded. Um, so I'm just going to go to Revision Plugins, Twixter Pro. Uh, if you don't have Twixter, then pick it up somewhere. I'm just going to do the frame rate and change it to 59.94 because that's my frame rate on my clip. If you don't know what your frame rate is, go to your project um, little panel up here and go to the footage and in the specs or 
in the properties or whatever up here it will say you know the uh, the size of the of the clip and the duration and the frames per second etc so you know 59.94 fps um, going back into Twixter right now you know I've um, put the framework in and now I'm going to keyframe this speed at um, 100 so I'm just going to push that and then click on the layer that you're adding Twixter to and click U and I'm just going to move like obviously now you can see your keyframes now I'm going to move a few frames forward and change that to 0.8 and you know my Twixter is not going to be great because as I did say his Twixter is messed up like his frame rate and whatnot so um, like as you can see there for example um, when it goes to slow it will it stops like that's not even moving right here you can't notice it and suddenly it will stop moving like if you just focus your eyes on that fifth plus 50 it's nothingness for this it's just like a still frame and then it will stop moving that's just because his frame rate's messed up. Um, I'm gonna have to live with it, and so will he. <laughs> so um, now I've done that, I'm actually gonna, probably just gonna change it to 0.4 and just move it so it's you know it's looking good. You know, it's not the best Twixter. But again, once I've added the Twixter, I'm just gonna select both of these layers and pre-compose them again. Uh, call it footage copy one. And as, the, uh, as you've placed your Twixter, what I like to do is kind of add an impact effect, as I call it. And what I'm actually initially going to do is just increase the scale. Um, so at this point, where you know where he's backing off from the kill, he's just got the kill, I'm going to uh, split the layer and then hit S, and this will come up with the scale option. And I'm just going to hit uh, the keyframe, like stopwatch, to uh, enable the keyframe. And as soon as like the points comes up on the screen, that's when I like to have it zoomed up in my face. So usually what I change it to is 117, and immediately, you know, the, the same time between the first and the second frame, I then place the third frame um, of it going down to about 110, 111, 112, um, and then throughout the rest of the clip, like to the, till the end of the clip, then I then place it at 104, and now what we have is, if I was to quickly round preview that. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. <clears throat> is we have you know it's zooming up, you know like, and then just slowly going back to its original scale. Um, so now what I like to do is I like to add like a wiggle expression. Um, so what I do do is go to go to the footage which the scale has increased and I hit P and then uh, Alt click on the stopwatch or for position and type in wiggle open bracket or I, don't know, I guess that's what it's called uh, 1 comma 20 and then close the bracket which can move my microphone over because it's picking up background noise I think um, and once you, once you do that it's going to initially now change the position now um, what it's actually done now if I was to go to the frame before it and go to the next one it's pushed it up and we can see these black edges around the clip so um, what I'm going to do with my arrows is just kind of move that back into position. There's probably a way you can fix this, but uh, I haven't really looked into it. So now if we go from, you know, the first, that one back, it's pretty much the same thing. So when we watch that back over now, I'm just going to round preview it from here. Shouldn't take too long because it's just raw footage, there's no effects actually added. <clears throat> so if we watch that back now, we have it kind of impacting, the scale increasing and then it kind of wiggling and scaling back down, which is an awesome, awesome um, kind of impact effect. Um, so again, I'm just gonna pre-compose those. It's just a thing I do. I don't really care what I call it. Um, and just make sure the it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Um, and now I kind of get into effects that I might use. So um, what I usually do uh, on the first shot, maybe I'd like to add a directional blur or a, you know, like a, a brightness effect. So I'm just going to add an adjustment layer and go to effects, um, color correction. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what, I'll just go to the effects and presets panel and type in brightness. Oh, that's a fail. Brightness and contrast, this should come up on color correction. And I'm just going to add that onto the adjustment layer. Uh, keyframe, click on the stopwatch on the brightness and move over a few frames to the part where he is, I don't know, just, you know, again, where the, where the points are like poking at your face. Um, and then I'm going to change the, uh, the values of that up to about 40. Um, you know, whatever, whatever you think is good. I, maybe 60 looks kind of in intense. 
and uh, you know after a few frames you know when it's gone back the points have gone back to its normal normal scale uh, I put it back down to zero so now what we have is you know with a color creation it will look a lot better and more um, more I don't know bright I guess uh, you could obviously put it massively high up to a hundred if you wanted to depends how you know important the kill is or whatever you think looks good um, I'm also going to kind of imitate these keyframes with another effect called uh, directional blur now um, you might have used this before if you haven't it's you know I'll demonstrate what it does you can adjust the uh, direction on this axis a direction like of where you want the blur to be so if I was to add know, a, a 50 blur right now as you can see that um, that kind of angle is going at a minus 36 degrees angle um, or well, I guess it's mine. Yeah, it is. Um, so you know, it's you know, I've gone back on it on itself. You know, if I was to go that way and want to put it that way, obviously it'd be like something like 310 degrees. Um, so you know, you can have like any any direction you want. I like to keep it at like you know, like a um, a 90 degree angle or you know, just a zero, so it's facing up. Otherwise, you know, it just gets a bit weird. Um, you know, just experiment with it and see what you think looks best. But I'm going to uh, stick with uh, the zero um, direct on the zero degrees, and I'm just going to um, keyframe the blur length at zero um, when you've keyframed the um, brightness at zero. And I'm going to move to the next keyframe for the brightness and put it the directional blur up to 35, and then when it goes back down um, to zero, the brightness. I mean. Um, turn it back down to zero. So now what we have is, you know, if I was to cut the round preview, that is we have this nice um, kind of. I'm not really sure what to call it, but it's quite a nice effect. Um, you know, there's really basic effects. I'm gonna, I'm going to be teaching you guys. Like I don't want to give you all of. You know, I'm not. I'm not doing this so I can show you different effects. I'm I'm showing you how to make the montage, and hopefully by me showing you how to do this, the easiest and the fastest way. Hopefully then you can kind of interpret your own ideas and effects um, of what you've picked up over the over the time that you've been editing and put it into your montage or episode or whatever you're doing. Um, so you know I'm not going to show you all the effects I use because you know I, I want to keep a little bit of original originality to my my videos. Um, so you know I hope you understand that at least. Um, so you know I like to add a few effects. You know so at the moment all we've got is you know, you know this blur and bright effect and then we've got the wiggle expression and the scale increase at the end when it's twixted. So um, you know there's a lot of effects you can also do, you've already synced it up so there's not actually much you can do about the sync. If you want to you know only use twixter for sync then don't watch this, don't watch this series. Um, there's like I don't even, you can just like, I'm sure you can find somewhere where you can learn it, teach yourself how to um, you know sync using Twixter but you know you need a good frame rate for that it looks a bit you know I, I like to keep my uh, my videos a bit more professional and a lot clean I, can, I like I like a bit of a clean feel to it um, so again on like the last on the last bit when he gets the last kill I, I like to add the same effect of what, he's, uh, what I've used for the first one so uh, if I want to copy the keyframes I just highlight them all um, if you're using a Mac, you just hit Command C. If you're using Windows, you know Control C. For the record, I'm just gonna, you know, say Command C, and uh, obviously Windows users just hit Control C. Um, just so I don't have to keep going through that every time I talk. So um, now what we have right at the end is this nice thing. I'm just gonna go through the whole clip and just see what it looks like. <clears throat> Again, in Premiere Pro, we can sort out the uh, frame. You know, when it just randomly flashes black, it's fine. You can sort that out on Premiere Pro. So obviously that looks kind of nice. That's you know basic as it's basic as it gets really. Um, you know, you could add a blur maybe, uh, just a normal Gaussian blur. Um, as it's uh, as the scale is enhanced, and you can add like a blurness, uh, a blurriness like effect where you know you put it up to like ten or, and then like frame it back down slowly. And I don't know. So that was just random. Um, and actually going to see what that looks like. <clears throat> I'll, uh, I'll pause the video. No, 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 don't worry. This is taking longer than I thought. <laughs> um, so now, as it, obviously, as you can see, uh, it goes blurry at that time, which looks kind of cool. I'm going to just watch through it now. Um, 
you know, look kind of nice. It's you know, the more effects if you use them in a good way, the better I think. Um, yeah, you don't want to over edit it. But yeah, I mean, it's your style, so do what you want. In uh, After Effects, by the way, I like to keep uh, two folders called Footage and Composition, like we've done in, um, or just Comps, um, like we've done in Premiere Pro. So you know, I, then I just stick all of the um, pre-composed uh, compositions and all the just all the compositions into one folder, and then all the footage once I've used them into the folder. You know, it just keeps it more organised. So you're not searching through like where's this, where's that. You know, it's just a lot easier. Um, I've been recording for 15 minutes, so I mean, I don't really want to upload massive amount, like 20 minute videos per tutorial. Uh, the next tutorial will be about colour correction and um, stuff like that. So obviously what you want to do uh, to prepare yourself for episode 3 is just kind of do what, do what I've just pretty much done in that video, but you know, bring your own unique style to it. You know, you're, you're, in, you're not me, so don't use the effects that I use kind of thing. I mean, use them in your own way. Um, like don't don't copy people. I don't I don't find that very good or entertaining. When I see you know things all looking the same, that's why I like to bring my own unique style to the table, as should uh, everybody else that um, does this. Um, so with that being said, um, next week or whenever I next do this, um, it will be on color corrections and stuff like that, and um, not really sure what else. So um, that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please uh, remember to like the video because I'm helping you out, so, you know, you could, if by liking the video, if someone randomly might see that you've liked that, and they might come on the video, it might help them out, so, um, you know, just, it's good feedback as well, so, if you did enjoy, remember to like, so that's it from me, um, hope you enjoyed, and hope it helped, goodbye.